How are you guys doing? Welcome back. Today's lesson two, think or swim and how to properly set up and use your charting software. This lesson is going to be fairly useless on other trading platforms. I think there will be some crossover, so please stick around. The tools that I use will be described here, so make sure you watch the whole thing. But when it comes to actually setting up and using certain tools, you may find this lesson be kind of lackluster. So if you have thinkorswim, I want to hop right into it. And if you have maybe a different one like trading view or maybe like weeble i'm sure a lot of this will transfer over but where the settings are where the certain things are may not be the same so make sure you guys research it google it if i can help please let me know what we're going to cover today is why i chart separate from my holdings and i want to talk about that very briefly and why i think it's super important for beginner to do this secondly all the control keys that i use there's about five things that i use that make me so much quicker than most people and again, efficiency and saving time is massive and why rich people are rich and stay rich is they efficiently use their time. That may be a very macro example, but efficiently using your time and efficiently charting is critical to your success. And these will be a small little tidbit to help you. Third, I'll show you how to add a hot bar to the top of your chart. It saves you so much more time. Again, all the clicking and stuff, it'll save you a bunch of great time with adding a hot bar. And I'll show you how to make study chart groups that you can add to that hot bar so it's much quicker. You can go between your settings and your uh, studies much, much quicker. It's fantastic. We're then going to do the chart setup together. I'll show you how to turn highlights off. I'll show you how to fix the volume. I'll show you how to do it if the chart gets super out of whack. All those kinds of problems we'll talk about today. Then we're going to discuss all the extra buttons on the actual chart itself, what they mean, how to use them, where to access them, where to close them, those types of things. Lastly, I want to hit up the alert center because I think it's really important to set alerts to be more automated. And so when things click, when things go off, you know where to look in case they go off and where to find them. That's what we're going to cover today. Probably a quicker lesson of all the ones we've done so far. But with that being said, let's get into it. So why am I so adamant that a beginner has two different brokerages, one for charting and one for holding the stock? The main reason is this. I think that a lot of beginners who especially swing trade, day trade, not so much probably, but those who definitely swing trade are going to have the issue that they watch their stocks literally all day, every day. You're at work. I wonder what the stock's doing. You're trying to sleep. I wonder what the stock's doing. You're going to absolutely torture yourself. I need to break it to you. It's going to go where it's going to go, whether you like it or not. All right. So stop watching the ticker constantly. The main problem is if you're going to be doing FinViz scans, think or swim scans, charting, research and reading, and you have your brokerage account open, all you're going to be thinking about are those stocks. So for me personally, I trade off of my phone. I have my phone put away while I'm working. Yes, I know the stocks that I'm holding, but I purposely do not look them up. I don't have a watch list on the side. I personally will buy a stock. I'll set two alerts, one above, one below, or I'll set an OTO bracket and let that bad boy run and don't watch it all day. We'll describe, we'll go into why that's so important mentally later in this course. But for now, if I was you, I am personally going to have a Weeble account, Robinhood account if you like, Fidelity, I don't care. Separate from TOS, have your charting software be exclusively for charting. Let your stock trading be somewhere else. And so while you're in the zone of charting, you're focusing on charting because if you're going to be distracted, I wouldn't chart in the first place. So that's my first tidbit for you. Make those two things separate in my opinion until you're more mature or ready to handle it being on the screen at the same time. With that being said, I want to hop right into Thinkorswim and go over some great tips for you. Let's check it out. So when you open up Thinkorswim, it'll probably look something like this. Now, this is not horrible. All right. I don't mind it, but I don't like how it looks. I don't like the, I don't like these highlights. I don't like how simple it looks. It looks very lethargic in my opinion. Let's go through how I properly set up my chart. We're going to go to the settings button. Boop right there. Great stuff off the bat. First off, where it says my tools, yours is going to look like this. On settings, my tools is where you can add a hot bar. Huge. You go to that and you hit my tools. You can have a bar on every single chart that has all the tools, all the studies, all the things you want to have on every single chart. No more of the days of hitting the studies button, scrolling down, going one centimeter too far, and then the whole thing shuts and you have to redo it. It's so aggravating. So what we're going to do is this. Instead of doing this, you're going to go studies, edit studies, add, oh, geez, and it gets like this. And then you add something that's random. You got to go back to remove and do all this crazy stuff. Chart settings. My tools. On every chart, apply. Boom. 
look at this. You're gonna to wanna to hit this so it makes it makes it vertical. That's how it, it pop up and down. It still has glitches. Hit it so it's like this. What you're gonna do now is that we can now add all the tools that you like, all the studies that you like, everything that you like, you can add right here. What you can do is you can go to the settings button right here and you can add buttons. You can add the drawing tools that you like. All of them are right here. All like cycle breaks, done. Hit cycle breaks. Now cycle breaks are added. Look at that. Oh, price level tool. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, now trend line. Boom, boom, boom. There's no more days of hitting this and going around and trying to find the right one. Is this the fib one I like? Is that the fib one? No more of those days for you. You can now add all your tools right here. You may be wondering, why is this one called Daddy's Favorite? We'll cover that later. <laughs> so that's your first tidbit is you put all your favorite tools here. You can also add your studies, load them and all the stuff here we'll talk about in a minute, and then add those right here as well, right? I'm gonna take off cycle breaks real quick. This is easy, watch. Cycle breaks, don't want it, delete button. Done. Boom. Let's go back to settings. Nothing on here needs to be changed besides that. Um, as we'll see, price axis, time axis, equities, options, and futures, and forex, all separate, and then appearance, right? All these things we're gonna cover. First is price axis. I don't change anything. If you wanted to, you know, expand up or down extra, you certainly can. Nothing here needs to be changed for my screen. Time axis, there does. This is where most young traders find their first issue. Have you ever accidentally scrolled really far to the left and so now a whole bunch of empty spaces on your right side? Let's fix that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're gonna find out eventually because that's what always happens. You're gonna have this tool. You're gonna go, oh, I'm checking. Oh, geez. And now for every single chart you go on, you have this much space. It may not always load this way, but I go to like Apple for a second. We can see Apple now has this. Google now has this. It's now over here. It's super aggravating. What do I do? Time axis, 456. That's way too many. I personally operate off of 35. You can do whatever you want to do. I use 35. Apply. Boom. It's been fixed. Look at that. An absolute lifesaver. That's going to be where you fix it when stuff goes crazy. That's the first place you want. I keep it at 35. I don't mess with this myself. Favorite time frames. Again, I swing. All these are fine. What I'm going to do though, three year, one week, get rid of it. I don't like it. You can add extra. You can move stuff around. I'm going to add for this class myself a 10 year in one day. Great. I want to have extra information. That's good. I'm also going to add an intraday. We're going to go to intraday, 30 day, and do about two hour if I can, if I can hit that. Uh, right there. Boom. I want that added as well. Right there. Boom. Anything you want to add, add it, subtract it. It's all good. I'm going to do that and hit the bu button apply. I can now go to control T, which we'll talk about. And there's the 10 year of Google ready to go for us. We could also see that again, Good to go, 30 day, 20, right there, good to go as well. Back to settings, we were just on time axis, that's good, fair time frames, that's not good. Appearance, candles, always a candle. I like to do fill down, open up, looks good to me. Doji's white, that's why I have to do it, looks good. Hit apply. Equities, now this is where we can have some nice stuff happen. I personally keep the highlight off. You can have the highlight on if you want to, it shows after day and intraday. It doesn't affect me because I don't really watch stocks like that when I buy it. For day trading, sure. Long term, sure. But I want to turn that off. So what you're going to do, it says show extended hours. Keep that on, but hit this off. Highlight, extend time, boom. Look how much nicer this looks off the bat. Oh, it's so much cleaner off the bat. Love it. Back to equities. Looks good. Again, for futures and all that, it should be turned off anyways. So for this, turn that off. Forex, I don't mean mess with. So it looks good. Second thing, I don't personally care about intraday volume. I don't, it doesn't bother me. And sometimes I wanna have the whole screen of chart. What can you do? I use volume profile, show volume subgraph, you can turn that off, you hit apply. Now the whole chart's good to go. I don't think you should always have this turned off. But again, for me, when I'm doing my classes, when I'm doing my stuff, I have it turned off. If you wanna turn the volume off, for whatever reason, that's how you do it. So I like to keep my volume off myself, that's all the things you have to do to have your charts look just like mine through this course, looking grand to me. Next, let's talk about the control button. Again, it may seem like a weird macro thing to say, but rich folks know how to use their time effectively. I personally hate having to use the mouse as much as possible. Anyone who uses TOS a lot knows that the mouse can be very fickle. So the control button offers quite a lot of different things for you. Off the bat, control E. 
will give you all your studies that you can add. Instead of going up here, studies, edit studies, and all that stuff, control E, boom, good to go. I wanna know the CCI of this, CCI, boom, good to go, apply, done, right? It's not gonna be all these extra steps. Control E does your studies. Control T does time frames. I'm someone who does a lot of time frame analysis. Now we're gonna have multiple time frames discussed in a whole new course, not this one. But if you wanna do macro to micro, this is the quickest way. Instead of doing a whole bunch of like four hour and then clicking, control T, 30 day, looks good. Control T, 20 day, looks good. Control T, 10 day, one day, one minute. You can really zoom in quickly in and out with control T. Instead of hitting the settings button, control S does the settings and all things you wanna talk about really quick for you. If you're like, all right, I wanna turn volume back on. Equities, volume, apply, done. All right, you wanna turn it back off, control S for settings, equities, volume off, boom, bam, bam, done. It's that simple. It saves you a whole bunch of time right there. Lastly, the one I'm most asked for is how I get rid of lines so quickly. Bop, 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 oh, I made some mistakes here. Look at this nice arrow I drew. Control Z gets rid of them. Boom, 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 boom. Control Shift Z puts them back on. Control Z, Control Shift Z, Control Z, Control Shift Z. It makes it so much easier. Gone are the days of right clicking, delete, right clicking, delete. Control Z, wipes the last 10, Control Shift Z, puts back on those left. Lastly is the scroll wheel. Again, if you wanna put all your favorite charts up here, all your favorite chart and tools up here, great. If you have a mouse like this, with as a scroll wheel, what you can do is click the scroll wheel in, bam, all your drawing tools are gonna be right there. Again, not terrible at all by any means to do this. Again, it's easier to have them all up here. You just go price level, boom, trend line, boom, much, much quicker, control Z, all that away as we can see. With the hot bar, let's talk about studies. There's gonna be some group studies that we're gonna make that we can add, we can subtract. What's most important through this course is you understand that your edge, your technical analysis should be your own. And so as you make your own studies, you wanna save these indicators to show you trend, momentum, volume, volatility. You wanna make a group and I have to go constantly back and adding all 10 of them. I'll show you how to do that real quick as well. So instead of being like, all right, well, I want to add some studies. Uh, we're going to add this, that, that, this, apply. Looks good. Uh, let's take them off, blah, blah, blah. And it takes all day. What you can do is you hit control E. Whatever you want to add, you can turn to a set. So let's say I want to do one called like all these right here, just for example, right? It doesn't matter. All these looks good to me. Save as set. I'm going to just put testy test, hit save, and I'm done, right? So now when I go to loads, we have testy test right there. What we can also do with now our new testy test set is we can then go to settings, add button, study set right there, testy test, done. Well, now we want to turn testy test back on. You can in about two seconds instead of squandering through all the different names, right? Let's say I want to look at all my eight favorite indicators. Boom. Hey, it looks really good. Love it, great stuff. What's testy test say? Boom, switches over instantly. Looks really good. What's fun profile? Boom, switches over real quick, instantly. It's gonna save you a whole bunch of time and a whole bunch of stress and anxiety. A great tool to have is that hot bar plus your studies and the drawing tools. That's gonna be your command center. It's gonna save you so much time. With that being said, let's cover the last few buttons I wanna talk about and some other great tools that TOS has for you. When it comes to some great tools on this page off the bat, we're gonna notice the share button here. For someone like me, that's huge. I can share my charting with other people with downloadable links they can, again, bring into their own TOS. It's really good. But then also, you can also freeze the time. So you can be like, I wanna share, don't update, and you can make a journal of what you saw and then go back and adjust it and go back and study it once the trade has been completed. So the share button's great. This button, the chart describer, actually gives you what it shows when it comes to studies. It's never very accurate. I've not really had it, I never really had it shed light on anything for me successfully. It's okay, but not overly happy with this. That's just the edit studies button. Again, control E does that. Settings, control S does that. Time frame, control T does that. Style, don't really gotta mess with, I think it looks good here. Nothing crazy at all. Drawing, again, in on the little D-pad here and your little score wheel, or again, just add them to your hot bar. This is now your command center. Studies again, easy. Patterns again, doesn't really show anything interesting at all. Next is the grid. I don't really trade off of a grid. Now day traders will very much enjoy this. Um, most times if I'm gonna do any kind of thing like this, I'm gonna have two open with the same ticker on different time frames. 
and I can watch large macro stuff and then watch the micro stuff as well. I'm not really big in having more than one, you know, screen open at once. Some folks on Fintwit have 85 screens behind them. I literally have a laptop and I do just fine. So why are you being all dramatic is beyond me. On the side here, not much you have to worry about quite yet as a beginner. This is the chart button. If you click that, it's gonna turn the chart off. So make sure you have that. Yes, active trader is here, right? You have your buy and your sells. Yes, level two is here for when you get better, right? There's no point of having all that stuff open as a beginner, but it's there and accessible if you need it. One great tool is the on-demand tool. The on-demand tool will show you historical stuff and go back in time. I use this in tandem with volume profile and also volume in general and just checking my old trades. And it's a great thing to use when you come to volume profile and then studying. You hit the on-demand button, it's gonna bring you back in time. See, so I brought us back to July 22nd and you can change the time, the date, whatever you wanna do. Like, all right, I'm at July 22nd, let's do August 27th now, go. It switches it, the charting stays the same. Everything's exactly the same. You hit it off, it goes back to normal. But it's a great tool for those who wanna go back and check when something was doing and see what they would have done in the moment. Lastly, there's a monitor button, analyze, yada, yada, yada. Let's check out the scan button and alert button really quick as well. The scan button's great. It's gonna bring up some really good scans for you and a bunch of different things here. We'll discuss this at length later. No point right quite now to discuss these different variables. We'll go through this later. Again, you can exit all this out. You can add stuff with the add filters, go through a whole bunch of stuff. I personally use Finviz because it's free. Everyone in this class can use it. And again, I think the manual eye is better than a computer in my opinion. You can find a bunch of great stuff here with the scan function. We'll go with that together as well. Last is of course, market watch and then alerts. You might be on the quotes one or the visualized one. You wanna to go to alerts. What's great about the alert system is when you set an alert, it's gonna be here throughout the day. So on your usual chart, if you set an alert, you can find it there to turn it on, turn off and see what you did. Cause we're gonna actually discuss how you can use RSI alerts cross under alerts and stuff. So let's say I wanna see Google go beneath this line here. I can actually do a right click, create alert with drawing crosses below, just like that, see now it's here. If you wanna see what this is doing, you can go to market watch alerts and you'll be able to find it on here when it actually does load up. See, we have triggered from the day. And this is great because there's quite a few times we hear ding, and then it's three seconds on the screen. You're like, wait, don't switch. And then you come back and it's gone. You're like, what was alerted? Well, this is the screen where you can find it. It's all right here. Let's say I want to get rid of this MNST one, cancel alert, get rid of it, you know, analyze, trade, complete opposite order, a bunch of great stuff here from the screen as well. The bulk of what I use though is just a charting software. Again, that toolbar is key. The control buttons, ETS and V and the scroll wheel are key. Those study groups you can add to your hot bar and of course you can load up later are gonna be key. And I just wanted you to have the same exact setup that I have so when you do this class with me, the chart looks exactly the same. That's it for this lesson. I didn't wanna to go too, too in depth about this and take forever and take a 30 minute lesson how my chart should look, but it was about 20 minutes so we were pretty close otherwise, right? With that being said, lesson three is up next. I implore you to watch this. I cannot stress. You have to watch the whole thing. Now you should watch every lesson from beginning to start, honestly. But how we build our structure in this course is up next. Please take the time to watch this. Lesson three, building a structure is up next. Let's get it.